record. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you to all of our guest panelists for joining us this uh, evening and for taking the time out of your uh, busy schedules to chat with us about transitioning from college to the workplace. And that's kind of a nebulous topic, but uh, what we're really hoping to kind of get at here today is sort of the minutia, the, the, the things that maybe you didn't know or you weren't prepared for prior to getting your first real sort of post-grad job. So to start out, why don't we just kind of go around in the group and just introduce, uh, I'll ask our panelists to introduce themselves and just uh, sort of briefly recap what you're currently doing professionally. And then once we're all familiar with one another, I'll kind of ask a few questions. We can go around in a group, then we'll give Emma, who is kind of here representing the student body, a chance to ask some questions uh, and we'll go forward from there. So let's just start in the order that I have you here on my screen. So Ashley, uh, if you don't mind kicking things off, introduce yourself to the group. Sure. Hi, Emma. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ashley DePerry. I graduated class of 2017 and studied arts management and English. Um, and now I work at the Juilliard School in New York, um, mostly with their music division and also in their provost office. Great. Thanks so much, Ashley. Now let's move on to Alec. Hey, everybody. So my name is Alec. I graduated in 2018. I was a finance major and a real estate minor. Um, since graduating, I've been working with Hertz, the rental car company, in their revenue management division. And essentially what the revenue management division does is where the people who set the rental car prices. So when you're looking online to rent a car, we're basically the people that are responsible for that price that you're seeing. Very cool. Thank you, Alec. All right, Justin, you are up next. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Justin. I graduated back in uh, 2015 from the Honors College with an accounting major and then 2016 from the uh, master's program in accounting at CFC. Uh, I'm a senior consultant with Dixon Hughes Goodman, an accounting firm uh, in our Dallas, Texas office and I work in corporate tax. Very right, cool, thank you, Justin. All right, Sarah, you're up next. Hi guys, um, I'm Sarah. I graduated in 2017. I was a computer science and an international studies double major. So I was in the international scholars. I don't know what it's called now. Um, and yeah, I was at Accenture, the really big consulting firm in Boston for the last three years. And I, in October, I actually switched jobs to a much smaller consulting firm doing similar work. Um, and with like Salesforce implementation. So if you've heard of Salesforce. Um, and so I, my role is like part technical, part um, business process oriented. Um, so I guess I can speak to like consulting if people have interest in that. Cool, all right, thank you, Sarah. All right, Olivia. Olivia, uh, like Sarah, I was also an international scholar. So I double majored in international studies and political science in 2016. Um, I spent the last four years or so working as a freelance writer and in that time did a lot of like traveling and teaching yoga and just doing like cool agricultural stuff. Uh, but with COVID, I took a job full time in a marketing agency. So now I do a lot of branding and marketing writing. Great. Thank you, Olivia. And last but not least, Maggie. Hi. I'm Maggie. Um, I know a few of you already. I graduated from C of C in 2017. Um, I now live in New York City. Um, Ashley, I didn't know you lived there too. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I live in New York and I work for a humanitarian aid organization called the International Rescue Committee. Um, we do humanitarian aid and assistance um, around the world. And I work on our programs in the Middle East specifically. Um, and I do a lot of like back end fundraising, budgeting, admin kind of stuff um, based in New York, but with some travel when it's not COVID. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you so much. And then uh, Emma, uh, just why don't you introduce yourself real, real briefly and, and give every give everyone here just kind of a sense of 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 where you're thinking, what drew you to the workplace and to the workshop in the first place, and and then we'll we'll maybe kick off with a general question for everybody. 
So hi, I'm Emma. I'm a freshman here uh, at the College of Charleston. I'm in the Honors College. Uh, right now, I'm a biochem, chem double major uh, on the pre-med path, but um, kind of what brought me here was sort of trying to figure out um, how to like find marketable skills for in case I don't want to go to grad school once I finish my degree, like if I want to get an industry job um, right out of undergrad and sort of just like how you guys kind of figured out whether or not you wanted to continue going on with higher education or uh, getting a job right out of college. Because sometimes I feel like um, the path that we're pushed down is very much like get as much education as you can. Whereas for, you know, a lot of people that may not necessarily be the path that uh, works out best for them. So I'm just kind of curious to hear about your guys' experiences uh, and how you feel like the college really prepared you for, um, you know, getting a job right out, of, right out of graduation. Great, thank you, Emma. And that actually, I think, transitions nicely to a first kind of general question because you are not the only one I've heard from, both current and former students who, who, who tend to think that, you know, the Honors College in particular has a tendency to maybe push students towards graduate school. Um, so whether or not you attended graduate school panelists, Let's just kind of talk generally, uh, just kind of a, a general introductory question here. Thinking back to your, your time at CFC and, and reflecting on, on what you knew when you, when you graduated, um, what is something you wish you could tell your former self to better prepare you for that sort of first foray into the workplace? What is something that you really, you know, maybe, maybe college didn't necessarily prepare you for that you wish it had? Um, and so we'll kind of open open the floor to anybody who wants to who wants to take a dip into those waters. Just kind of thinking uh, a, a bottled message to yourself of however many years ago. What what surprised you about entering the, the professional realm? Yeah, I can I can start and take this. Um, so I actually, I did go to graduate school, but it was only a one year program uh, for master's of accounting. And that's pretty general, just so that you get, um, there's a requirement for 150 credit hours to get the CPA license. Um, but I think that this advice kind of holds true to that too, because a lot of what you learn, you know, in undergrad and in, in my graduate program is very technical. And I think a lot of what you don't necessarily, you're not prepared for is a lot of the soft skills, you know, and I think the honors college is better than, you know, the college as a whole, right? Because you are, you know, you're being more analytical, you're exposed to a, a broader variety of, of topics, but, you know, really don't expect that you can go show up and you've been a straight A student and you're just ready to, you know, tackle your role at your job, whatever that is. So, you know, be patient, you know, you might be humbled at first. And there's just a lot that I would focus on in terms of soft skills, in terms of, you know, learning about the broader you know, business world, not just accounting. Um, and, and, you know, I think I did pretty well at that, but still I want to have focused more on that and not just the technical, you know, what is the purpose of this course? What am I learning here? But to take even more out of that. Sure, great, thanks, Justin. What do others think? Did you did you feel prepared? You're thinking about those soft skills. Did you feel prepared to go from college to, into the workforce? And if so, was there something specific at, at college that sort of helped develop and hone those soft skills? I can build on that. Um, I think when I, so last year when I decided to transition from freelance to an in-house role, I actually hired a career coach because I realized I knew nothing about networking. And surprisingly, like everyone tells you how important it is, but like I actually got the job that I got now through networking, through cold calling, through cold LinkedIn messaging. I never sent in an application, never sent in a resume. It was purely through talking to strangers. So <laughs> it was like a super uncomfortable process, but I think there's a lot of value in practicing it and putting yourself out there like that. Sure. How about other folks? Any any experiences, whether positive or negative from, from college? Sort of, uh, you know, did you take a networking workshop? Did you go to an event where you could, where you could kind of, uh, you know, try out some of, some of your, your interpersonal skills, Ashley? I will say, do you guys still have BGS? We do still have BGS. Okay. Um, and you would have just done BGS, right, Emma? Because you're a freshman. Yeah. Um, I still, to this day, <laughs> use the things that I learned about resumes and 
cover letters in particular, because cover letters are so difficult to write. And I was an English major, so I wrote all the time. Um, but I think specifically learning how to market yourself is something that the Honors College emphasized teaching. I know that they had a lot of workshops and networking workshops and that sort of thing. Um, and it was one of those things when I was in college that I was like, I don't really need this. And then I got out of college and I realized I, I definitely could have used more workshops on how to talk about myself because it's uncomfortable um, to sit there and, and just say what's great about you, but you have to learn how to sell yourself, um, whether it be through networking on LinkedIn through cold messages or actually writing like a, a proper, not proper, but uh, you know, like a traditional application or what have you. So um, those were, those were skills that I took away from honors for sure. 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 Any other experience? And cause there's, there's more than one way to network yourself, right? I mean, Ashley, you just kind of talked about sort of the written part of networking, selling yourself, crafting a cover letter. Uh, but then Olivia, you talked about the actual sort of face to face networking. So any other panelists, ha have you ever, have you had experiences, um, you know, whether it's face to face or putting your, you know, putting an actual application together where you, you know, you discern something that you might be able to pass on to current students? Yeah. I'll jump in here. Um, so one of the things I would say, kind of on the lines of networking, but also on the lines of taking advantage of opportunities while you're at College of Charleston, is I'd really encourage anybody to take advantage of all the professional opportunities that are offered either by your your school of study, like the School of Business for me, or even the Career Center. So where I actually found my job with Hertz was at the career fair. They were taking a recruitment trip. Um, and the way that I actually ended up getting a job from Hertz is I just walked up to them at the career fair and kind of talked to them, introduced myself, networked with them a little bit, ended up interviewing with them on campus. Um, and it ultimately ended up being my full-time job and I'm still here almost three years after graduating. Um, obviously, it was just a conversation. It was a quick conversation where I introduced myself. Never in a million years would I have thought it would have turned into a full-time job. But like everyone said, you know, you never really know where that conversation is going to go unless you start the conversation. Sure, that's great. Thanks, Alec. Uh, Maggie or Sarah, any thoughts on, on kind of the networking topic here? Um, so I was not like a chem or a biochem major, um, but I had a lot of friends who were uh, pre-med track. Um, and one thing I think we have at real advantage being in Charleston is having MUSC there. Um, and I had a lot of friends who worked in labs at MUSC, did research with, with professors there. And they found that really helpful, whether they chose to go to medical school or to do something else kind of in the, in the bio and chem world. Um, so I think that's something that, uh, to take advantage of. And I think that the MUSC community is really welcoming of the C of C community. So I think like for your major specifically, that's probably something to, to look into. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I would say sort of specific to, to yourself about networking. I mean, I had a, a different experience finding my job where, like I didn't, I didn't know anyone at my company when I applied and started working there. So I was very much like a traditional cold application scenario. Um, and I, I, um, I would agree with what Ashley said about what we learn about sort of marketing yourself, telling your story, you know, putting on paper what you want people to know about you. That's the most important. Um, and I think you just get better at that over time. Um, but yeah, I think Charleston is, for such a small town, a surprisingly good place to be in terms of opportunities. Um, and so that's something, you know, to, to take advantage of while you're there. Great. Thanks, Maggie. Um, yeah, I guess the one thing people haven't really talked about, like um, Olivia mentioned LinkedIn, like your LinkedIn profile is really important in terms of like you showing up in searches for people who are looking for applications. So like the new job that I took a few months ago, um, I got through a recruiter reaching out to me and that recruiter was actually sort of like a, I don't know if headhunter is the right word, but they were recruiting for multiple clients. So I interviewed, I wound up interviewing like several different places just with 
a handful of people who had reached out to me. Um, and it was because I had those like keywords for skills on my profile and I had marked myself as open to work and for what kind of positions I was looking for. Um, and just like some people don't know that LinkedIn has that feature. I mean, like younger people maybe know that more now, but um, when I was looking for a job, I started paying for LinkedIn so that I could do like what Olivia's talking about too, like cold message people and um, just like had a lot of people look at my profiles, make sure it was sort of conveying the right message and um, was clear about the skills that I had. Um, the other thing I'll say in terms of like I have also met people who um, worked for a few years, like especially at my last company who were working for a few years before they were going to medical school. Um, and just to like get that experience and maybe work in like a healthcare adjacent kind of field. Um, so specific to your experience, I think that's also something that a lot of people do um, just to give themselves the opportunity to evaluate if they wanna do something more professional or more like directly hands-on care. Great, thanks, Sarah. Emma, any questions, whether specific or general? I think more generally, um, I know I noticed that like with myself and with a lot of my friends, we sort of struggle with walking that fine line between taking on a lot of uh, commitments that are like uh, developing us as people and developing our experience and stuff, but also like avoiding burnout, um, which especially you know this year is pretty, pretty hard to do. Um, so I guess my question is, is like, how in college did you kind of like, you know, evaluate uh, taking on those commitments and those responsibilities and those things that you were really passionate about, but also making sure that you weren't overloading yourself? Great question. Classic honors conundrum. Uh, so, so panelists kind of thinking back and, and just sort of thinking about your various experiences on campus, did you find that, that the, the, you know, were they more substantive when you when you really sort of stopped and committed to a few to a fewer a few experiences versus trying to kind of do everything? Or did you find that, that having a little in half sort of dipping your toes into a variety of different experiences actually benefited you? Because I suspect the answer could probably lean either way. But for you personally, uh, which direction did did it did it kind of go? Uh, start off with this one. Um, I, I think for me, definitely, there were a few business organizations, business school groups where I think, you know, just the relationships were a lot better in the networking. Like, you know, as we spoke about, if you commit to a few, but really dedicate yourself to those, um, you know, I'm sure that could vary among, you know, different career paths and, and fields of study. But, you know, I found that to be the best route for me in school, you know, and, and also, you know, then moving on to the workforce, there's a, there's a tendency when you're a you know, top student and you go show up somewhere new to try to take on everything. Um, but that's been something that I, you know, try to keep intact and, and remind myself that it's better to be known for a few things and really commit yourself to certain aspects of your job than try to show up and, and take on everything that, you know, you possibly can, um, even if, you know, you're not necessarily required to do those. But, sure. So I think definitely, you know, keep it more focused, but, you know, substantial. Sure. Thanks, Justin. How about others? Have you found that you're able to balance your different commitments in your professional life, similar to the way you were at CFC? Is it is it a completely different experience, or are they are they kind of one in the same? All those you know, all the various kind of uh, whether the extracurricular or, or work assignments or or just kind of things you're trying to do in in your personal life. Um, I could say for this, um, I think my experience at College of Charleston, like I wasn't involved in, in a ton of things outside of, like I was very involved with the Honors College and with the Fellows Program and, and International Scholars, but I wasn't, not really a club person, so I wasn't really like involved in a lot of other things other than sort of school stuff. One thing that always helped me feel balanced was um, like doing stuff in Charleston that had nothing to do with school. And I think that's really nice about living somewhere like Charleston. Like I always had a restaurant job. And so I would have like school and then I would also be around people who weren't at school and kind of be doing things that weren't school related. And that for me was really valuable because I felt very overwhelmed if I felt like my entire life was about school and 
eventually trying to find a job or, or whatever I was going to do next. Um, so I think like, it's important to do things that are, you know, school related and do well in your classes and stuff like that. But I think it's also important to like nurture the parts of yourself that, that don't have anything to do with school can, can also be really good just mentally, I think. Sure. Absolutely. How about others? Have you, do you find that you have more time as a working professional to have kind of a, a, a work-life balance than in, than in college? Less time, maybe the same, different, whole different experience? I can jump in here. Um, I'd say it's just a different experience as a whole. I think in college, one of the things that I personally really enjoyed, and I know some people ne don't necessarily enjoy, is the schedule is just a lot more flexible. Your days are always changing. Um, some days start early, end early. Some days start late, end late. Whereas in the professional world, at least in my experience, um, a lot more rigid hours, kind of that same schedule every single day. So it is a lot easier um, in the professional world to kind of get into a routine. So if you're very much a routine person, I think that works out a lot in your favor. Um, but it's definitely just a little bit, it's a little bit different, more, more routine and less flexible as compared to college, at least in my experience. Sure. How about others? Any time management tips? Because you, I, Alec, I think you're right. It is a, it's a different environment. There's a different structure, and it, of course, it depends on on your employer and and the industry you're working. But uh, what do others think? Was it was the was the time management process drastically different in the professional world versus college? Was it kind of the same? Were you able to transition, or was it a was it a major jolt to the system going from you know, staying up till 3 a.m. and doing work to having to get up at six o'clock in. Uh, I can I can jump in. Yeah. I think for me initially, um, coming out of college, it was a lot easier going into the professional world because of what Alec was saying. Because you have generally, in in my type of position anyway, more standard hours for what you're doing. Um, I will say this year has made me reevaluate time management in particular. Um, my job got really crazy working at a school um, and a performing arts school trying to reevaluate everything this year. Um, and I'm sure there are many other people whose jobs just kind of blew up in their faces and they had to rethink everything. So it became really easy for my job to consume my entire life just like I feel like sometimes in school, it's very easy for school to consume your entire life. Or if you're trying to balance a ton of extracurriculars because you want to load up that resume, like it's very easy for things to tip out of balance, especially if you just look at your personal life as like an extra thing. Um, so this year I've really learned that it, it is just as valuable to make sure that you are giving yourself time to be a person and not just a resume and a list of things on a resume um, or a list of tasks you have to check off. Like you will do what you have to do, you'll get it done. But um, I, I think this sounds really simplistic when I say it, but just the fact that you make the choice of what you do with your time. Like your, your time is yours and you can you can decide how you want to balance it. So that sounds um, pretty simple, but it's something I really had to learn this year. So, yeah. Sure. Would others agree with that? Yeah, Ashley, I think that was said really, really beautifully. <laughs> so I think um, I was, I know like when I was at called to Charleston I was a mega overachiever so Emma I don't even like want to talk about burnout like <laughs> it's, it's not worth it don't do it <laughs> but at the same time some of my best friends who are still friends with me to this day are people who I met through like the different clubs and organizations that I was involved with so I would say your time is your own but like find fun ways to fill it and maybe that's through getting involved with something at this college, or maybe it's through like taking walks around Charleston and enjoying the beauty and just letting your mind wander, like whatever it is, just try to enjoy it. And also you will probably be entering a very different workforce than the one that we entered. And it'll probably be inherently more flexible and allow you more balance than, than we experienced when we first graduated. Sure. 
Do we, uh, be a panelist. What do what do we think? I mean, a lot of folks have have kind of talked about about just sort of the 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 structure and the foundation of work changing forever as a result of of COVID. Do we think, you know, whether in your own personal experience or in general, is that going to be the case? And if so, how can a how can a college student prepare for this sort of new frontier of of the working world? Any do we have any any sort of impression? crystal balls out there? Um, yeah, I can speak to that because as a result of COVID, probably because of COVID, I took like a, a completely remote job. Um, and I wouldn't have considered that before the pandemic. I still don't know if it's going to be like a permanent thing. Um, but I think, and that cut would sort of go along with what I, the advice that I would give in terms of transitioning to the professional world and like how work looks different is in college you're not you like turn in your assignments and there's like a very standard rubric and like success is very um it's very much in the hands of your professor you like have a relationship with your professor that's like has a lot of rules around it um that's not the same when you get into the working world like your communication is like probably the biggest skill that you need to learn is like no one's gonna help you just because they're nice. I mean, some people will like, some people will like reach out and be like, how can I help you learn and stuff like that. But for the most part, you need to learn how to like report things very succinctly, ask exactly for what you need, um, be able to report on what you're doing in a way that's very clear and demonstrates that like you have, where you're blocked on things, where you have achieved things. And it's just, and then, so then to tie that back to the remote piece is like, when you're remote, that's even harder um, to do. So you just have to be super proactive about communicating with people um, and proactive about relationship building. Like I started this job remote. I've never met anyone I've worked with in person. Um, and uh, I'm sure um, Olivia may have also had that experience, but like you have to, message people you have to talk to them about non-work stuff too to build relationships with them so then you build trust and rapport and like keeping your camera on like it's just a different experience and it's hard and it's really uncomfortable when you don't know you feel like oh i don't know what the expectations are because i don't know these people and you just like got to communicate like consistently in a way that you don't have to as a student because there are just like very set boundaries and rules around what it means to be a student. Sure, yeah, that's great, Sarah. And actually, I'd, I'd like to touch a little bit more. You, you talked about sort of building relationships and I'd love to hear from, from some of the other panelists because when you when you go into the workforce, it's a, it's a completely different ecosystem, right, than, than college. I mean, up to up to that point, you 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 have this built-in group of peers that you've been progressing through your sort of schooling life with, and then all of a sudden, you enter this new world where everybody's in in at different points in their lives. And, and so, how did you find just the the process of 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 entering a new environment and building, making and building new relationships? Was it challenging? Any sort of tips you might want to pass along? Uh, the it is a whole. I mean, it's a whole. You're, you're right, Sarah. It's a whole different. Uh, it's a whole different process if you're having to do so remotely. But you know, whether whether we're talking about remote or in person, was it was there a stark difference between kind of making we'll, we'll say professional relationships and and campus relationships, or was it pretty similar? I, mean, I think, you know, it really depends on like the size of the organization that you go and work for. Um, so, you know, I think overall, though, that the message is that mentoring relationships are really important. You know, you may have those sorts of relationships with your professors, but they're even more crucial, I think, in the working world. And it doesn't need to be, you know, if you're at a large organization, your direct, you know, superior, your supervisor, you know, it could be anyone in the organization that you look up to and think that you'd like, you know, your career to, to follow, you know, their progression of theirs. So I think that, you know, outside of the normal kind of coaching and performance evaluation, you know, criteria that people aren't used to when they come from college to the working world, finding kind of informal mentors to help you with your career progress and advice when you, you know, needed some counsel on, 
on some decisions in your careers, finding those sort of mentors is really important. Yeah, absolutely. How about others? Have you been able to connect with a with a mentor in some capacity? And if so, did it sort of just happen organically? Did you did you sort of have did you have to seek somebody out? Any experience on that front? I can jump in. Um, I was really lucky because my job came to me through a series of internships, um, which is a great way to get a job if you have the opportunity because that mentorship is inherently built in to an internship. So it's kind of a bridge between school and entering the workforce where you still have someone who is there specifically to give you guidance if it's a well-organized internship. Um, and then I moved on and those same people were then my coworkers once I moved into my normal position. Um, and I think once you have those sorts of relationships built, it's equally as important to work to maintain them because it's very easy, especially if you're not working directly with a person anymore, it's very easy to just kind of let the relationship go, but they're going to continue to be valuable in ways that you might have no idea about for five more years down the line. Um, but every person that you form a relationship I have found in the professional world and in college um, can really come back to, to affect your life in ways that you can't anticipate. So I, I really recommend just trying to, you know, like you would with friends or anyone who you like, just try and stay in touch with them. Sure. What do others think? You, others would agree with that? Yeah. I'll jump in and say, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, you never really know when a person's going to come back or what opportunity a person may be holding and tying it back to even college days. Um, my professors provided me so many professional opportunities. Uh, my internship was from one of my professors that I got to know a little bit better than my normal professor. And you never really know who's connected to where. And I think it's really important just to, um, important just to treat those relationships like you would any personal relationship as well, because you really never know who may come back and help you in the long run. Sure. Any other thoughts on that front, Maggie? Um, something that I found valuable, I think um, sometimes, yeah, you're in a program where there's sort of a mentoring relationship um, built in, but I think if that doesn't, you know, if someone doesn't, you know, maybe fall into your path who, who seems like a good person for you. Um, I spend, a, I've spent a lot of time looking at people whose careers I think look great and who have jobs that I think I would want and like first stalking them on LinkedIn everyone's whole life is on LinkedIn um but just trying to see okay you know this woman has a job that I would love to have in 10 years like what'd she do how did she get this you know what steps did this person take what degree do they have um and I think more often than not people are really flattered if you'd reach out to them and you say like I think your job seems really interesting. Could I buy you coffee and ask you some questions? I think people are usually open to doing that. Um, so I've done that, you know, several times with people at my organization, um, or you know, people who I've met in other in other ways. Um, so I think even if it uh, maybe a traditional mentoring relationship doesn't uh, materialize, I think you know there's a lot of value in yeah looking at people who you admire and seeing what steps they took to get there. Absolutely, that's great. Olivia, do you have something to chime in? Yeah, just to build on that, you can um, filter on LinkedIn by college. And so I know when I was doing my job search, I would filter by College Charleston alumni and reach out to them and do the exact same thing where I would be like, hey, your job is really cool. Can you like talk to me on the phone for 20 minutes and tell me how you got there? And everyone was like so accommodating and happy to share. Absolutely, yeah. And we actually, there are several CFC alums who work at, uh, links, LinkedIn's headquarters pretty high up in, in, in the company. And we had a LinkedIn workshop a couple of weeks ago. And the, the, the kind of the alumni association is very active on LinkedIn and does a lot of work interacting with um, alums from CFC. And the response has just been overwhelmingly positive it, from, from to hear them say it, they've never been sort of shot down or ignored. And somebody reaches out, they, hey, I'm from CFC. Would you be interested to chat, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's, that's great advice. Um, 
Emma, before we kind of wrap things up and, and give everybody a, a kind of final, final parting words of wisdom, any other questions uh, you want to pose? Yeah, I guess I just have one more question. Like, do you feel that CFC like prepared you for the more um, collaborative nature that I feel like the workforce tends to take? Or did you feel like um, you were in college, like kind of doing your own thing all the time, like you were just doing all your own individual work. And then all of a sudden you're in a workplace where you're working on these big projects with a group of people and you have to kind of learn how to work with people who maybe like would approach the project differently than you and have like different ideas. Like, do you feel like college prepared you well for situations like that? Or like, was that kind of like a culture shock thing when you first entered the workplace? Great question. What do, what do, what do folks think? Is, is collaboration in the, in the working world different than, than collaboration in college? And if so, how? Yeah. Is it, yeah, go ahead, Sarah. I'll, I'll take it. Um, yeah, so this is something I thought about a lot in terms of like, college doesn't prepare you for that. But I think the reason that college doesn't prepare you for that is because there's no hierarchy in group college in group projects in college, which is like why they inherently don't make a lot of sense. Um, like, uh, it, it's just like it or like why they don't necessarily always work and people dread them. It's because like, in the real working world unless I mean even in those organizations that are like we're flat we don't have titles like there are still like there's still like seniority there's still people who are in charge like there's more structure around that kind of stuff so um I don't know there's not it, it would be something that like a, the general educational shift at all institutions would need to make to like really prep you well for that. But um, just like keep that in mind when you're doing a group project, like it's most important that someone is like delegating tasks and it's clear like who's doing what and when it's due. Um, and that happens more naturally in the working world than it does in college. Sure. What about others? Were there skills you were able to take away from your your collaborative experiences in college that have served you well in in the working world, or or is it just a sort of a a stark difference between the two? Um, one thing that I had to learn uh, in my job, but I also think college prepared me well for, was I work with a lot. Most of my coworkers are not American. Um, and English is not their first language. So that, um, you know, there's like inherent things that are different than working with another college student who's really similar to you. Um, I do think something college prepares you well for, or I felt that it did um, with like being in class with all different kinds of people is, um, you know, really giving people the benefit of the doubt if you have a misunderstanding, um, really, um, Someone told me when I started working, you should always assume good intentions until someone proves you otherwise. But, you know, for the most part, uh, always assume good intentions. And um, I think it's just important to, to like, when you come into a work situation, you just, you know, you treat everyone as equal, no matter what they're bringing to the table. And I think that's something that college does prepare you for in some ways is that social aspect of working with people who are really different from you. Um, and I think that's a soft skill that like some people are really good at and some people it's more of a challenge. Um, but I think like those opportunities where you have maybe like a difficult group project with someone you would never choose to spend time with, like that's what work is like because you can't choose who you work with, um, like for better or for worse. So I think that is definitely a soft skill that, that college does help you with in a lot of ways. Great. Any other thoughts in terms of just kind of work collaboration. I'll just yeah, say, um, I don't know if I learned this from college, but I think it will apply to college group projects as well as work. Just a general communication thing. Everyone wants to feel like they are contributing something valuable and they want to feel like they are valued in a team. Um, so I, I just think the way that you talk to people when you're working with them on something is so important. Um, just with, even if you're really frustrated with them and they haven't been doing what they are supposed to be doing and they're slowing everything down. If you vent your frustrations at the person, you are less likely to get the result that you want than if you treat them with, you know, the respect that we all 
want when we're trying to get something done and maybe have things coming from a thousand different directions. Um, I have, I think just a lot of <clears throat> my personal, I don't want to say successes, but my personal positive uh, experiences at work can be chopped up to just the way that you communicate with people. That's great. So we're we're kind of coming coming up against time here, and I want to give all of our panelists a chance to offer any sort of sort of parting words should they choose to do so. Just kind of thinking about some of the the topics we've discussed here, and 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 thinking about advice that you would proffer to to a college student to just help them be better prepared for entering the workforce, in sort of regardless of of what industry or or what, what their trajectory is. Um, so any kind of final words of wisdom you wanna throw out there, it could be anything from just a personal experience to a tidbit to just a very big, broad, vague kind of thing you'd find on the bottom of a Snapple cap, just with the floor is yours to, to, to share with the, the current students of, of the Honors College as you see fit. Anyone wanna, wanna chime in? I'll start. <laughs> I think Emma, to get back to your original question about grad school, I so I went to grad school for a semester and dropped out, and like there were no consequences, nothing bad happened. <laughs> like you can choose to be an adult however you want, and there's no rules, and like you'll be fine. So I would say just don't be afraid to go after any experiences that you think you might be interested in, because at the end of the day, that's the only way to find out if you like them. Absolutely, absolutely. How about others? Any other thoughts on sort of finding how to find your own your own path, your own trajectory? Exactly. Yeah. I'll echo that sentiment too. Um, and one second thing that I'd say is don't forget to have fun with it because I think we've all been there and it can seem so overwhelming that college is only four years and you're supposed to figure out exactly what you want to do with your life. You feel like everybody has it all put together. As soon as they graduate, they know exactly what they're doing. And in reality, I, I'm pretty sure probably all of us on this call would probably say we didn't know exactly what we were doing when we graduated. Um, and we just kind of figured it out. We're, a lot of us are probably still trying to figure it out. So obviously work hard and, you know, explore the opportunities that you feel are important to you, but also don't feel like you have to have it all figured out and remember to just have fun with it all, all along the way. Absolutely. I think adding on to that, you know, definitely something that I've just learned and we kind of talked about this um, already just with the nature of work and flexibility is I've just learned to set boundaries a little bit more, you know, so it's been a yeah, very busy few first years in the workforce and it set me up well, but at the same time, if I could go back and maybe take a year longer, but enjoy a little bit more of the time, I would have. Um, so, you know, we just talked about school being a certain number of years. Your career is, you know, 35, 40 years. So don't rush it. Um, definitely set boundaries for yourself. Take care of yourself first. And, you know, don't try to, uh, to burn yourself out. Absolutely. Sarah? Yeah, I would say um, that... I think that something like your professors in college and like the people you'll encounter in college, for the most part, they're literally there just to support you and just to like help you do whatever it is that you want to do, which is amazing. But then when you get into the professional world, like people are more likely to have an agenda for what they want you to do. Um, and I think there's a lot of like there can be a lot of fear of disappointment of like someone who is your manager or like heading up the project that you, you were on if you want to do something different than what they want you to do. But you just kind of have to let some of that go and you have to advocate for yourself and what you want. And um, I think that in terms of like what I wish that schools prepared people better for is just like how to advocate for yourself and how to recognize when it's okay, when it's inappropriate to say no, and when it's okay to say no because you want to pursue a different kind of opportunity. Um, because those, there's not gonna be 
typically, I mean, you could have a really amazing manager, but frequently there's, there's not going to be someone who's going to sit you down and say like, well, do you like, think you want to go back to school? Like, cause they want you to keep working for them. So, <laughs> so, um, you just gotta, you have to have more of those conversations with yourself and with like other people and just be, be proactive about saying what you want and realizing that you are never going to please every single person that you encounter in your professional life. And that's okay. That's great. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, any other thoughts before we wrap up? Um, I would just say about Olivia's point about graduate school. Um, that's something that I thought about a lot, especially towards the end of college, because um, I, I didn't have a job lined up until several months after graduation. So there was like definitely a the appeal of knowing what my plan was for the year after graduation. And I do feel like professors always think you should go to graduate school because they went to graduate school. Um, so, you know, you just have to do what's right for you. I think um, in some jobs, you know, like at, at my job, I've heard people say, well, she has a master's degree, but she has no work experience. So that's like, you know, like it really depends on the field, whether a master's degree or a PhD is really what you need. So I think just, just do it, what feels right um, for you. I think for medical school too, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I mean, like my brother is at MUSC. He went straight there after graduating. I have friends who took a year to scribe. I have friends who deferred their admission to go work in a lab. Like there's, it seems like there's only one path, but you know, really there's not. Um, I would also say in terms of hard skills, uh, I didn't know how to use Outlook my first day at work, like the, the email thing. And I felt like such an idiot. So maybe take a look at that before you go to work. <laughs> and also I was a humanities major. So if no one is teaching you how to use Excel, teach yourself how to use Excel because every job requires Excel. <laughs> and I wish someone had taught me how to use it correctly. So those are just like things I, I wish, I think should be on every college curriculum is how to use Excel. All right, note to self. Excel workshop ASAP. All right, uh, thank you everybody so much for taking the time to join us. I know it wasn't exactly what we expected, but I actually thought that was an incredibly beneficial conversation. Emma, I hope you, you thought so as well. Thank you for, for sitting in as a representative of the entire student body. And um, I am going to do everything in my power to get this in front of some more student eyes, even if I have to project it on the side of Randolph Hall, because I think this is very important stuff. And I think a lot, I think pretty much all students would, would benefit from hearing from this conversation. So thank you again to our panelists. I really, really, really appreciate you taking the time to share some insight, talk about your experiences. And um, yeah, thanks again. Everybody have a fantastic rest of your Monday and a fantastic rest of your week. And we hope to see you in person at some point in the not too distant future. You're always welcome back on campus. I very much look forward to the day when uh, we can open the doors and invite you back in. So with that, I will say good night to everyone. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. See you all. Thanks, everyone.